Earlier today, an asteroid nearly destroyed all life on Earth. Let's talk about that. Good morning, Chia Lincoln, and good morning, Chia Lincoln viewers. It is February 1 1, 2001. One. Whoa, whoa, what? Is that right? Friday? Yeah, it is. Confused. There's a lot of ones. It's not that confusing. Okay. It's Friday, and you know what that means. Sometimes. <laughs> not always, though. It means it's Science Friday. You can't call it Science Friday because that's already a show, at least a podcast on NPR. I know, oh. I know that. Okay, well, we'll call it Science Saturday. That doesn't make any sense either. How about we call it um, Good Morning Chia Lincoln Science Edition? That happens to occasionally occur on Fridays. Okay, yeah. Okay. But, well, but, and, I, and before we get into it, let me say that as a result of Good Morning Chia Lincoln, I learn a lot anyway. It, just as a result of yesterday's show. There was a lot you needed to know. Well, two day, I, I learned from a couple of days ago that if I pulled my battery thing off, it would reset my engine light, which I did this morning. Thank you, yeah. viewers, for commenting. Uh, I also learned yesterday what the term uh, levity actually means because I didn't use it correctly. And it totally, I, I, okay. I, I will admit, I did know what levity meant, <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't exactly, I wasn't listening. I was trying to think of the next thing I was gonna say. Oh, okay. That's what, so, so I apologize to all the viewers out there. For not correcting me? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, it gave them an opportunity to correct you. Also learned that a barn owl and a barred owl are two different types of legitimate owls. I learned that, definitely. That was new to me. So, so you know, maybe you can learn something today. Well, I was exaggerating when I said that an asteroid nearly missed the Earth and almost killed all life on Earth. But I was not exaggerating by saying that an asteroid almost hit the Earth. I mean, it, it came within like 3,000 miles of uh, the Earth earlier today. But it was a relative... Did you like feel the breeze of it or something? Well, I have a telescope and I'm constantly scanning the Earth. That's why I don't sleep. Didn't you know this about me? I have like a $350 telescope and I'm constantly just scanning the Earth. I have a feed that comes into my computer and I'm... <laughs> Mel and I, I'm like, oh crap. There's an asteroid. <laughs> Better call NASA. Why didn't you call me if, if you knew this was happening? Like, <clears throat> well, alert me and my family? Or? I figured that it would miss us, and I was right. Uh, actually, I got this from the news. I don't have a telescope. I got it from the news, and the news said that um, there was a, very, a pretty small, just a few meters across, asteroid that came within a few thousand miles of the Earth, and it was pulled in by our gravitational forces that the earth exerts on things and then it kind of slingshotted it around okay <coughs> but it was a couple of meters wide if that would have hit the earth what would have happened it most likely would have you know been torn up by the friction or dissolved in the friction of the atmosphere and and maybe a few pieces known as meteorites when they come into the atmosphere and hit the earth mm -hmm. would have made it maybe like hit somebody in the head a really unfortunate person maybe killed like one person well actually or a pet or something it's a meteor when it's coming into the atmosphere. Yes, that's true. And then once it, if it goes and it lands and you can pick it up, that's a meteorite. And you can make like jewelry out of it. And you should, and you should sell it for vast quantities of money. Or you can do what my uncle does and you could just get rocks out of your backyard and say that it's meteorites and sell them on the streets of New York. You want a meteorite? I got one in my... Got one in my trench coat right here. I got lots of meteorites right here, baby. This one's still on fire. It's a it's a meteor. It's not even a right yet. But it, sorry, it looks a lot like a like a pond, a river stone. No, this is this is straight from space. <laughs> it's you know it's meteorite. Okay, I'll give you three dollars for it. Smell it. You can smell the meteoriteness of it. Okay, um, now. Break the bad news, Brett. Here's the bad news. Earlier this week, if you if, if you have a large telescope or you have the news, you may have seen that Russian scientists have predicted that in the year 2036, that's not too long away, you know, we'll all still be alive unless, you know, we have a disease or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, well, we all die, right? I mean, it's just... A lot of people who are watching this will still be alive in 2036. Apparently, there is a massive asteroid two football fields across. Now, when we get up into that size, we're talking 
catastrophic damage if this thing makes it to Earth because it will penetrate the atmosphere. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting better, people. Day by day, I am getting better. Um, and it will break the atmosphere, and then it will be like nuclear bombs just going off, and it'll cause a nuclear winter. It's going to kill a lot of people. This is bad news. 2036, very large asteroid on a collision course with Earth. Now, the Russian scientists are like, this is a very horrible thing that will happen. I don't know how to do a Russian accent, so that's that was it. But the, the U.S. scientists, the NASA people are saying, well... They disagree, and they're challenging them technically, to like a wrestling there's, match. There's like a 1 in 250, 100,000 chance that this will actually happen. So technically, the Russians are correct. But it they're is, alarmist. But it's very unlikely. But we're talking a 1 in 250,000 chance that this asteroid is going to make a, come in contact with the Earth. Now, and I think that, you know, you're 2034 or so, we're going to have better prediction better predictive powers, and we're going to know. And let's just say that we determine that this thing is on a collision course with Earth, just like the movies Deep Impact and Armageddon. You know, we've been through this before. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm not worried about this. Two entire movies have already been made, and they were almost made in the same year, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with viable solutions to going out to this thing and blowing it up. But in Armageddon, Bruce Willis saved the day, but in Deep Ip Impact, they blew it apart with nuclear bombs, and one of the big pieces still made contract contact with the earth and well whichever one had Robert Duvall in it is the one that I'm going with and hopefully that's not the one that had Ben Affleck in it I don't know well that's the one that it made catastrophic impact well that's the one I'm going with whichever one has Robert Duvall but my question I'm going with but here's the deal I've got a, I've got a theory I've got a solution and it's not blowing up the, the meteorite those it, are not the same th a theory and a solution are not the same whatever thing. it is we don't need to do anything to the object coming at us. All we need to do is something here on Earth, something very simple. And I'll be in charge of the committee to do this. Wrap the Earth in Snuggies, like mass-produced Snuggies, so it'll just bounce off the Earth. No, that, that's not my idea. I am proposing a system called EPS, the Earth Positioning System. Four very large thrusters, one at the North Pole, one at the South Pole, one in China, and one in the U.S. Actually, you know what? Let's put the other one like the, at the equator. Both of the other ones should be at the equator. One of them should be like Panama, and the other one should be like the other side of the world. You get my idea. Four very large thrusters. I'll oversee one of them. I'll oversee the one at the equator. I don't want to spend any time at the poles. I'll oversee the one at the other side of the equator. Very, we very talk every day large on thrusters. And these thrusters are strategically placed so that it, as the Earth rotates during the day, as it's coming around, it's like, all right, fire up thruster three. And it's like, and the Earth moves a little bit. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that would throw off like rotation, orbit, pretty much everything. I don't think that's a good idea. It would save us though. Yeah, you know, it's a Band-Aid solution. I think we should really entertain the whole Snuggie thing. No, but think about it. After we dodge the asteroid, because this will work, people, then, like every 4th of July, or like every time any country celebrates their independence, we fire all four thrusters at the same time. And, and nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> it's just like a celebration. It's just like, all right, everybody, it's the 4th of July. They're going to fire all four thrusters. It might smush the Earth a little and you bit. Like, you, get, you, get, you can be like anywhere on the Earth and see these things because they're so big. And it's just like... <laughs> this huge column of fire and we just and everybody celebrates and all four of them go and the earth takes a little bit but it doesn't move at all that sounds horrible and then it's over and then we just we celebrate with these thrusters after we use them to dodge asteroids and then if future asteroids come we strategically use them and we get out of the way leave a comment tell me your, where i'm wrong people with your idea which i'm sure will be better than that his but maybe not better than mine let's check in with chia lincoln he's getting brown it has got a lot going on right here, though. All right, while we're all st still here on this earth and we can enjoy ourselves and make meaningful lives for ourselves, let's do that. And I hope that Good Morning Chia Lincoln continues to be a part of a meaningful life for you. See you Monday. I, was I tried to give it a poignant ending. I like that.